Today I'm going to share three easy ways to customize your Canon EOS R to help make your gear work better for you and the way you shoot. Hey everybody, I'm Lindsay Adler and I'm a portrait and fashion photographer based in New York City. I've really come to love my mirrorless camera, the Canon EOS R. And one of the things I find most useful is how I can customize it to fit perfectly for the way I shoot. And that's the point really, right? I mean, I want my gear to work for me instead of me working for my gear. I can change everything, the buttons, the dials, the rings, the settings to make my life easier and to adapt to how I shoot, whether I'm in the studio or I'm on location but there are so many different functions and menus and options that it may feel a little bit intimidating to know where to start. And so that's why I'd like to make it easier for you. And I'm going to show you what I find to be most useful for customization. So let's take a look at three great customization options. The touch sensitive multifunction bar allows you to tap or swipe to change whatever settings you indicate. So ask yourself, what is something that I find myself constantly changing that I'd like to have readily available? For me personally, I found it extremely useful to change my multifunction bar to adjust my ISO. Typically I set it up so that a left tap is ISO 100, a right tap is ISO 800, and a swipe allows me to adjust between those two numbers very simply. This is especially useful when I'm outdoors and maybe I'm adapting to changing lighting conditions. Sun pops behind the cloud, no problem, I can quickly bump up my ISO. Fading light at the end of the day, no issue, I just slide my ISO higher and higher. And this is where you really need to think and consider about how you shoot. What would make your life easier? Maybe you're a wedding photographer and you frequently find yourself moving between an outdoor daylight white balance and an indoor environment with a lot of tungsten light. For you, setting your multifunction bar to white balance may actually serve you better. So here's how it works. In your camera's menu, select the custom functions menu. It's the orange icon that looks like a camera with the little dots under it. Then go to the fourth menu within that section and select customize multifunction bar. Next, choose the setting that you want to control. You can set the bar to adjust the ISO, your white balance, check focus, movie settings, autofocus, and more. And once you've decided what setting you want the bar to adjust, you can then indicate the action for the left and right tap. And by the way, if you find yourself accidentally swiping or hitting the bar unintentionally, you can actually enable a touch and hold feature that requires a brief hold of the bar to activate it rather than a simple tap or swipe. Another customizable feature is the new Canon control ring. All new RF lenses made for the Canon mirrorless system have this ring that you can program to allow you to easily adjust a number of settings. And these include your shutter speed, your aperture, your ISO, exposure compensation. But let's say that you don't have any RF lenses yet. That's not a problem. There's actually an adapter for your pre-existing EF lenses that gives you this new programmable ring control. Personally, I set my control ring to exposure compensation. When I'm on location, I'm moving around, I'm bopping between lighting conditions, I like to quickly adjust my control ring and change my exposure. What's really great is that because the EOS R has an electronic viewfinder, I can immediately see how the changes in exposure compensation change the final appearance and look of my shot. So how do you set this up? Go back to that same custom function menu, select number four, and then go to customize dials. Scroll down and select and activate the ring, and then choose which setting you want the ring to control. Now, by the way, if you select one of the controls with the little arrow pointing down, this prevents you from accidentally moving the ring and changing something without realizing it. The symbol indicates that you have to press the shutter halfway, then rotate the ring to change the desired settings. Without that little arrow, it means that whenever you rotate the ring, the change is going to be made. You of course are going to want to set up your autofocus based on your preferences. And there are so many different options to choose from, but there are really two autofocus settings that I use most often. The first is face detection with eye tracking autofocus. What this does is it locks focus on the eye closest to the camera when I'm shooting portraits. It's fast, it's accurate, it saves me a ton of time when I'm shooting people. To set this up, go to the autofocus menu, it's purple, and select menu number one. Change the autofocus method to the autofocus face tracking and then enable eye detection AF. The other autofocus option I prefer is the touch and drag autofocus. So whenever you touch the back of your camera screen, it's going to lock focus on that point. What I really like about this feature is that I don't have to actually use the entire back of the screen to focus. I can actually limit it so that I can have a smaller area for touch and drag. Now to set this up, if you go to the autofocus menu number one, then go down to touch and drag autofocus settings. Now you're going to have to test this out for yourself, but usually I find that I use the bottom right quadrant to allow me to move my thumb around quickly to reposition my focus. And I don't have to worry about you know, my face or my nose or something accidentally refocusing for me. Oh, and by the way, if you have the EOS R and haven't updated to the new 1.4 firmware, you are absolutely missing out. 
the update dramatically improves eye detection and tracking. You'll notice the difference immediately. Let's say that you have some common features and settings that you use when you're inside the studio, but then you have entirely different set of features and settings you use when you're shooting maybe portraits on location. Honestly, it could be kind of a pain to have to keep switching those around, especially if you're busy and you're moving on the job. But that is what custom shooting modes are for. You can actually customize a shooting mode so you can simply switch between C1, C2, or C3 to select a great starting place for your camera so it's already customized to your preferences based on what you're shooting. Maybe C1 is for shooting indoors, C2 is for shooting outdoors, C3 is for shooting in the studio. Maybe instead you have different modes for shooting people, places, and things. It's really up to how you shoot. All right, so here's what you do. Set up your camera exactly, exactly how you like it. Every setting is going to be saved, so you need to make sure you don't inadvertently have something undesired switched on. So then you go to your menu, specifically to the wrench icon, custom shooting mode, register settings, and then choose C1, C2, or C3. And voila, you have your custom mode set up. So anytime you need to get back to those settings, simply navigate to that custom shooting mode. Now remember, it's not about having to understand every knob, button, dial, unique camera setting in your camera. I mean, there's so much there, but instead it's about having the knowledge to make your gear work for you seamlessly based on the way that you shoot. If you'd like to check out the gear in this video or to learn more, visit adorama.com. And if you've enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.